This is the third of four tutorials where we're learning how to uh, write a component, a custom component, that will show the number of lives left in our whack-a-mole game. We're calling the component T Whack-a-mole Life Score. In the previous tutorial, we worked out how to draw the image we'd use to display the lives with MS Paint, and we also worked out how to paint it inside our component. Now, the first thing we want to do in this tutorial is add a property to our Whack-a-Mole Life Score so we can control how many carrots get drawn at runtime. When that's done, we will add a slider bar to our form so we can adjust how many carrots are displayed just to test the component. And then finally, no, not finally, we have two more things to do. When that's done, we'll add some more code that limits the number of carrots that can be shown. Um, because it's fairly meaningless, for example, to pass this component a negative one, so we want to handle that. It's probably meaningless to pass this component a, um, a really big number, like a thousand. We're not going to have a thousand lives in our game. So again, we're going to have to try and come up with some way of handling that. And then finally, we will modify the container, and at the moment we're using a T-panel. So it's transparent, so the life score will be drawn over the background images that, uh, or the background image that you've chosen to use in your game. It'll pretty things up a little bit. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to add a property to our Whack-A-Mole life score so we can control how many lives are shown in code at runtime. Now a property is a very tidy way of accessing the internals um, uh, of an object in Pascal. Um, we're going to start by typing the keyword property. I'm going to give it a good name. So value is a good name. Um, value is going to be of type integer. We're going to access it by reading the get value method and we're going to access it by writing the uh, set read uh, Set value. Right, so it's a property, its name is value. It's a property, its name is value, it's of type integer. We read it by calling get value and we write it by calling set value. So I've typed out the interface of that property. I'm going to hold down the shift and control key and press C. And uh, Lazarus has typed um, these two stubs of code in the interface section and uh, fleshed out some code in the implementation section. So we need to write some code in set value. Now set value is taking the, uh, the value uh, or the number of lives that we want to set. Now the number of lives corresponds to the, um, uh, the index of the image that we're drawing here in add image. So, for example, if we wanted to pass in the value 3, 3 lives left, we'd need to call add image three times. But this time, instead of doing it like we did down here in the constructor, in fact, I'll get rid of those, in, 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 uh, by hardwiring it, we're going to enter into our loop and do it a number of times based on a value. So, I'm going to use a, a, a for loop, which is very handy for counting from uh, one integer to another. And the code for that is, for i, we need a variable to count. So I'm going to call it i for uh, index. For i equals 0 to a value, minus 1. For i equals 0 to a value, minus 1, do. Now, the minus 1 is important. If we have one life uh, left, we want to call uh, add image with a value of 0, or an index of 0. So you can see that's what the minus 1 is doing. Uh, add life, pass in the index i. Type a semicolon. Now we need to declare this variable. I select it, control, shift, c, for complete. And free Pascal or Lazarus has added the keyword var. There's our i, it's of type integer. Uh, so we've um, implemented the code that sets the value. Now we've got a call to test it. 
And I like the idea of using one of these uh, slider bar, or track bar, should I say. It's under the common controls tab, and it's the first control. Just click on that, grab one of those, paste it down here. Now, if I double click on it, we enter the um, uh, track bar uh, change event. So this will fire each time we slide the track bar. Inside here, I'm going to type F score which is the name we've used for the variable that's holding the reference to our whack-a-mole score. fscore.value, which is the property that we've just created, equals track bar 1, which was the name uh, Lazarus gave our track bar that we just added. added uh, track bar 1 dot position. All right. Uh, add life. Uh, add image, add image, I got that wrong, add image. Um, hit the run button, we'll have a look at our code. Good, and there's our track banner, if I slide that up, it'll draw um, lives for us. And if I slide it down, ah, the lives aren't uh, disappearing as I slide it up. So I slide it up and it works, but I slide it down and it doesn't. That's because I haven't implemented the code yet to uh, clear these images. All right, now to clear the images, we need to keep track of how many of them we've drawn. And you'll notice that in add image, um, we're creating these things, but at no place are we keeping track of the fact that, we're that we have created. We need to start doing that. We're going to do that with um, uh, something called an object list. Now I need a, a reference or a variable, a field variable to hold the object list. So I type f list. I'm declaring it in the private section. F list is it's of type T object list. All right. Now I happen to know that object list is uh, inside the containers unit. C O N T N R S. So I need to add containers to the users clause. Uh, now we need to create our, um, our list and we also need to destroy it. So what I did then was select that line, control C, copy that to the clipboard. Um, we need to create it. We'll create it in the Whack-A-Mole Life Scores constructor, but we're also going to take responsibility for destroying it. So to do that, we need a place to destroy it. And the place to destroy it is in the Whack-A-Mole Life Scores destructor. Got to add that. So I type the keyword destructor. I happen to know the destructor's name is destroy. Uh, so I've typed these three things, destructor, space, destroy, um, colon, override, colon. And we'll talk more about exactly what's going on here down the track. Uh, control shift C will flesh that out. Um, in the destructor, in the, dis in the method destroy, it's calling inherited destroy. I'm going to type in uh, our F list, F list dot free will do the job. All right. Now control shift up takes us back to the interface section. I go to create control shift down and in here we're going to type F list colon equals T object list create. All right, so now we have a container to store our images in. Control Shift C back up. I'm going to add image. Control Shift C down. So as soon as we've created it, we're going to add it to the list. All right. Now the list is going to take over the responsibility of destroying these images. So we have to make one small change here. In the image.create method, it takes uh, a parameter, and the parameter is what's called the owner. Now, this is the class that's responsible for destroying the image. You don't want the uh, container to be uh, any longer responsible for the destroying the image. So we're going to pass in nil. And that's telling Pascal that we're taking over that, that job. Uh, so we've done uh, two things so far. We've um, uh, created a container to store our images in. We have added our image to that container. Finally, the other thing we have to do is when we're setting the value of lives less, the first thing we have to do is clear all the existing lives. 
So we type flist.clear and that will empty any existing images out of the list and hence off the screen. So now as I scroll up we get more images and as I scroll down uh, they disappear. Beautiful. All right, let's have one more look at our to-do list. Okay, add a property. We've done that. Add a slide of our control. We've done that. Add some limits to the number of carrots that can be shown. Okay. Okay. So let's have a think about uh, what we can pass in here. Set value. Is there any meaning to pass in a negative number? Uh, probably not. So let's uh, do a bit of testing for a negative number. Zero has meaning, negative number doesn't. So um, if a value is less than zero, then, then what? Well, that's a good question. We can either swallow it and assume that a negative number is zero, or perhaps we could um, uh, raise an error so the programmer knows that they've sent in some junk data. Let's, uh, let's raise an error. So if a zero is, if I, if I hmm, cannot pass negative number. So if a negative number is passed, the system's going to uh, fail, blow up, but with a meaningful message saying cannot pass a negative number. Now likewise, if we pass a really high number, how do we want it to behave? Um, At the moment, we can show one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You can show seven, but the slider bar can show eight, nine, ten. You can see it's scrolling off the side. Now, a bunch of possible behaviors would be maybe we could start drawing the images uh, smaller. Um, maybe we could just uh, swallow numbers higher than seven and just display seven. Or maybe again, we could um, we could cause the application to fail. Now, I always like the application to fail if I passed in dud data. So it makes the programmer responsible for always ensuring that good data is passed in. So we'll do that with another if check and raising another exception. So if a value is greater than, let's say 5, meaning it's 6, Uh, with the message cannot draw more than five lives. So let's see what happens to our application when we pass in six. So it's one, two, three, four, five. And what's going to happen now? Six. All right. We get an exception message on the screen. So the default free Pascal exception land handler has kicked in. It's told us the line where the error occurred and it's told us the message, cannot draw more than five lives. And we can hit the break key, and it will take us to the place in our code where there's a problem. If we hover the mouse over the, uh, the input variable, a value, we can see that six has been passed. So that's quite useful to help us debug our um, whack-a-mole application. So I'll hit the go, I'll hit the stop or the terminate, button. So now we know that we cannot pass in more than five lives. So let's come into the uh, slider bar and set the maximum value as five and see what happens now. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now we've fixed that problem. You can't get the slider bar higher than five. Good. Uh, okay, we're making some good progress. Uh, limit the number of carrots that can be shown. We have done that. 
Now the final task is to change the container so it will draw over existing images rather than obscuring them. You see the problem we're trying to solve here? Uh, this image is drawn on a T panel and the T panel is opaque. Um, that might be more obvious if I come to the form and change the form's caption to something, um, I think a nice purple. There we go. And run it. Okay, here's our um, uh, here's our um, here's our panel, and we can see the um, carrots are not looking that good on top of the purple panel. There's this border here, which is messing up the uh, display, and there's also the opaque background of the carrots. So we've got two things to fix. First of all, let's get rid of the opaque border of the panel. Now. The panel is a useful place to start, but a better um, container is something called a T-Control. There's one uh, small change we need to make if we're using T-Control as the parent. In Add uh, Image, um, uh, we need to change the parent of the image. Instead of uh, from self, which is the T-Panel, we need to change it to the uh, parent there we go the parent of the control now that's got rid of the border problem that we had so we've removed that opacity but we still have the issue of the background of the uh, images uh, displaying and that doesn't look that pretty one more thing to change we're going to set the transparent property of our image Bingo. All right. So now the background of our image is not being drawn and it's showing through whatever it is that the image is being drawn on top of. In this case, it's a fairly uh, bright purple background. But if it was, a, if it was an, another sort of image, maybe some grass in our whack-a-mole game, um, it would be drawing nicely, nicely over the top of that also. So just to recap, in this tutorial, We've added the property to our whack-a-mole score so we can control how many carrots get drawn at runtime. We've added a slider bar uh, to the form so we can um, uh, zoom in and zoom out or add, um, dynamically add zero to however many carrots to the screen by sliding the slider bar. We've added some limits to the number of carrots that can be shown because it's meaningless to show minus one carrots or a really big number of carrots. And finally, we've changed the way the carrots are drawn uh, so the um, container doesn't obscure the background and so the um, uh, opaque part of the image that's not uh, needed doesn't obscure the background also. So we've made some good progress. We've got one more tutorial and in that one we'll move all the code into a separate PAS file. Uh, so it can be uh, used elsewhere in the application, or so it can be used in the application away from our main body of source uh, in a way that we don't have to worry about this code once it's um, been locked away and debugged.